Hi, this is Dave T1963. It's been a while, but I thought I'd put a video out there because once again, we're getting ready for hunting season and I see the big talk about all these broadheads and the differences and all that. And, uh, you know, I've been doing this for over four decades. So I do have a little bit of experience. We were using single bevel broadheads way long time before it became popular. The old Grizzlies, you can go back and look, used to be a single bevel broadhead. But there's a, and they're good broadheads. I'm not gonna say they're not good broadheads. So for all those people that like to come out here and throw their comments out and be ugly and hateful, you know, take it somewhere else. There's nothing wrong with using a good cut on contact single bevel broadhead. But they're not magic bullets, okay? And there's a lot of hype around them that just don't weigh out. Uh, you know, I hear all the time that they're superior breaking bone. Well, the first fact is breaking bone don't kill animals, okay? Bleeding does. Hemorrhaging. That's what kills animals. And for all those that think they're going to put together an arrow combination with a single bevel broadhead and consistently shoot through the shoulder bones of large North American game animals, you're going to be tracking some, some animals and you're going to lose some animals, period. I don't care what your setup is, and I don't care what kind of pixie dust you want to sprinkle on it. The very fact is, if you're hitting the shoulder bone consistently on large North American animals, you're going to run into trouble. And that shouldn't be your plan A. You shouldn't be planning for doing it. Uh, become a better archer, be more selective in your, your aim points and stuff, and try not to hit that bone. Um, anyway, putting that aside, you know, I've got two tools here. Anyone that's chopped wood or cut wood for any length of time has used these tools. The first one is a common ax. You know what you never see is a single bevel ax. Why? Because the blade is more brittle, more prone to breaking because the angle makes it thinner. A double bevel will keep a thicker blade and make it more durable, okay? Same with the splitting wedge. For splitting wood, you never see a single bevel splitting edge. You always see either a two point or four point splitting wedge because that pushes apart the wood. Now there's a big difference between bone and wood, I get all that. My point is penetration has to do with the energy that impacts at the target and what kind of resistance it meets. The design of the, the implement is one of the least contributing factors, okay? So a single bevel versus a two bevel is just a bunch of hype. You're not going to get that much more penetration with a single bevel, if at all. You are going to take more of a chance of your blade being chipped on impact with a single bevel. That's just pure physics because of the angle and the thickness of the blade. Uh, I, I personally find that single bevels a lot of times give far worse blood trails. I, I don't know why that is. Uh, maybe it has something to do with the initial cutting and the turning of the blade as opposed to a sharp blade being pushed through. I don't know. I just know that over four decades of bow hunting with every kind of broadhead you can think of, I have had way better blood trails with a double bevel broadhead than I have a single bevel, okay? Another crazy thing that I see posted all the time is that they can a single bevel will continue to turn as it goes through material. And that depends on the material it's going through. If it's going through heavy muscle, your single bevel broadhead might turn, might turn an eighth of a turn more through the whole wound channel. Might. But I will tell you something that you don't hear. Blade design has far more to do with how a blade travels through, let's say, meat than does a, con or a single bevel or a double bevel. For instance, the Simmons Sharks, and I don't know if I have one right here handy. I'm, I'm sure I do somewhere. Hang on just a second. This is a Simmons Tiger Shark, I believe it is, but this has the concave blade. And what happens a lot of times is meat is not the same density throughout. There's, there's tendons, there's little bones, there's all kinds of things. 
that will cause thicker and harder parts than other parts. And when this blade encounters that, it will actually turn due to the thicker part here and cut a much bigger wound channel than a straight blade. I guarantee you it'll travel more than a single bevel will cause rotation. All right, go do your own test on this, folks. Go buy a, a pot roast or whatever and shoot through it with your bright heads and see what different blades do and don't do. Okay, and once again, I'm not saying a single bevel bright head is a bad bright head, but I think there's far more important things to concentrate on, and that is cutting surface, how much blade actually makes contact and cuts, how durable is the, the broadhead, how easy is it to sharpen because I don't care what kind of broadhead you have, just the act of putting it in and out of your quiver dulls it and you really need to touch these up in the field. So being able to sharpen your broadheads correctly is important. Uh, the energy of your bow, the stiffness of your arrow, all this comes into play. If you use a real weak spined arrow with a heavy tip, when that, Im and you can do slow motion photography to verify this, when that hits something substantial like a bone, that arrow shaft is going to flex. And the flexing of an arrow shaft loses energy. Okay, so there's all kinds of factors involved with penetration. The biggest factor of all is proper aiming technique. And man has been using bow and arrow for literally thousands of years, and this has never become more of an issue than what it is now. This modern day hype that your plan B is acceptable and just let it fly, you know, totally disregarding the, the bone structure and the anatomy of an animal it is absolutely hogwash. And it was never taught until here recently. Okay, and I don't care what studies you produce on penetration. I really don't give a crap. Shot selection is the number one most important part of putting an animal down in recovery. Shot selection. Energy and efficiency of your equipment is probably number two. Number three is definitely the sharpness and, and the cutting potential of your, your broadhead. And then there's other factors down below, like I said, the stiffness of your spine, the bevel, the degree of angle, all those kind of things are way down the list. So what I really recommend, and, and here, I, I'm going to give you a great example. If you are taking a broadside or quartering away or quartering two shot, and you shoot through the shoulder bone, the ball and socket joint of a North American game animal, which I highly it's highly unlikely that you will penetrate that whole bone. But even if you do, depending on the angle of the shot, 90% of the time, you're not gonna hit anything vital. If you're hitting that shoulder bone and you do manage to break it in two somehow and your arrow continues forward, 90% of the time, you are not going to produce a vital wound in that animal. All right, go look at the schematics, even from a high angle of shooting almost straight down, if you go through a shoulder bone, at best, you're going to hit one lung, maybe guts, maybe a little bit of the liver, maybe. In all likelihood, you're going to hit meat. You're going to hit an area of that animal that does not produce a vital wound. And even if you do kill the animal, it's going to be extremely hard to find that animal because you haven't made an efficient killing shot. An expandable broad, broadhead, as much as I hate those things, a well-placed expandable broadhead has more chance of killing a deer if it's placed correctly in the kill zone than a single bevel does, or a double bevel, or a narrow broadhead, okay? They can be the most lethal broadhead on the market, but there's always that chance you're gonna hit a bone and they're not gonna penetrate. Anyway, there's a lot of great choices out there. A lot of great broadheads being made. It don't have to be expensive. I, I know I don't have any Zwicky here handy, but I've killed probably hundreds of animals with the old Zwicky 2 and 4 blade Delta models long before there was all this hype about all these other broadheads. 
They still will kill an animal very, very quickly if you do your part. Just don't be deceived, folks. Shot selection, number one. When it comes to recovering a game animal, your shot selection and shot placement is far and away number one. Number two will be the design of that broadhead and, and to some degree the blade contact and the sharpness of that blade, how sharp you get that blade. Uh, and like I said, the actual design of the blade can impact how that broadhead travels through me and what damage it does, but that is way further down on the list. You, you get those, that first thing wrong, you get the shot selection and shot placement wrong and you're going to have problems. You get that shot selection and shot placement correct and most of these other factors are then irrelevant. What design broadhead, how much blade contact, if it's shot in the right place it's going to cause a vital hit. Your blood trail may or may not be equivalent, but that animal is going to be put down humanely and quickly. All right? And yes, plan B's and plan C's and plan D's and elemental P plans, they can happen. But by gosh, we should be doing everything in our ability to make sure they don't happen. And I'll give you, I'm going to wrap this up with my story last year. Last year, I did not kill or I did not recover a single buck. Okay? I shot two different bucks last year. I hit one in a hard quartering away shot and followed that deer for over 100 yards and I'm convinced that deer died but it hopped onto private property and I was denied access to go and recover that deer. Game warden told me there's nothing I could do to recover that deer. The second animal I hit directly in the shoulder. That animal lived, okay? And I shoot a heavy traditional bow with a well-made cut on contact broadhead and it did not penetrate the bone and that animal I had pictures of later on on trail cameras. Within a week he had recovered. So once again you don't have to take my word for it but please don't listen to everything you see on YouTube and all the hype and stuff that, that goes around and these con you know these current faddish things that are going on and stuff like that. Get a well-made broadhead. I recommend a cut-on contact broadhead. I recommend you learn how to sharpen them and touch them up. And then focus on picking out and waiting for and executing the best shot selection you can. Okay? Uh, you do that and I guarantee you you're going you're gonna to have better blood trails and better results. Anyway, the AT1963, I'm out of here.